Well, hi traders, Chris Weston here from the research team at Pepperstone. It's going to be a big week ahead of us. There's a lot of landmines that we need to navigate our trading portfolios through. I think we need to be aware of the risks and we need to understand positioning and where the, the potential moves could come through in the market. Where's the risk reward trade? Uh, and should we be looking to, to massage our positions, look to reduce our exposures? These are all things that, of course, we do as traders. What's our leverage ratio? You know, how much margin are we putting down for trades? These are all factors that we need to think about as traders as we go through major event risk. Now, if we have a look at implied volatility in the options market, specifically in FX markets, we can see that there's been pushing higher. So the market is expecting movement across the dollar pairs. We can have a look at interest rate volatility and bond volatility in the move index, and we can see that's been pushing higher as well. And that may spill over into high volatility in equity markets and gold and, and, and some of those obviously second derivatives of that. Now, what are we watching? Uh, we can talk about the US centric side of things, and that's really going to be boiling down to the US CPI number that comes out on Tuesday at half past 11 at night Eastern Daylight Time, and that comes out at 12.30 lunchtime in the UK. Uh, later on, the week we've got PPI numbers and retail sales and University of Michigan numbers, but it's that CPI number which is by far and away the volatility event that everyone's focused on, so that has to be front and center. Later in the week, we are going to be seeing, we are going to be watching UK employment data, and that's quite interesting now because if you have a look at the UK rates curve, we can see 27 basis points being priced in for the next Bank of England meeting, so the market there is expecting another rate hike to come through, and then the ECB meeting later on in the week as well, where the market is thoroughly expecting a 50 basis point hike that's completely priced in, and actually, have you have a look at the ECB rates curve as well, you can see that the market is expecting the ECB probably actually to be the, the most aggressive central bank from this point forward in terms of raising, raising rates. And you can see that because they're probably the most concerned about inflation of any of the central banks playing through. And actually, have you have a look at the terminal pricing in Europe, you can see that now above 4% at 408, uh, equating to about 168 basis points of tightening from this current rate that we're sitting at the moment. Now, the question is, is will the statement and will Christine Lagarde and, and the urgency around that meet up to the market's pricing? If there's a discrepancy and divergence between the two, that could result in, in volatility in euro dollar and euro crosses and, of course, Germany, Germany 40 and, and other um, European equity markets as well. I think if we take a step back and have a look at the stage that we've got for US assets and, and global assets because of what um, happened from Jerome Powell. Now, he has opened the door to a 50 basis point hike on the 22nd of March meeting. If you have a look at rate hike expectations now in the US, we're pricing in 43 basis points of tightening. So that equates to around about three and four chance that we get a 50 basis point hike at that meeting. So the market is saying on balance that we expect a 50 basis point hike, and that probabilistically is saying that we expect a strong non-farm payrolls number and a strong uh, CPI number. And that really feeds into our risk reward, that market pricing. I think as well, when we go into that Fed meeting, it's pretty clear to me that the Federal Reserve are going to have to raise their dot plot projections. These are the projections of where they see the Fed funds rate uh, for the end of this year. At the moment, it's sitting at 5.1% and into in 2024 as well, which is, is sitting just above 4% as well. Now, it's pretty clear to me that they're going to have to raise that Fed funds projection uh, you know, above 5.5%, maybe even as high as 5.75%. And they may even have to raise the 2024 dot plot projections. The market's expecting that as well. Uh, and market pricing, if you have a look at Fed Funds Terminal, uh, currently sits around 568 at the moment. So clearly the market is expecting them to raise that terminal price or that Fed Funds projection going forward. So it shouldn't really shock. Where we are at the moment in terms of market pricing then uh, leads us to the non-farm payrolls number. Now, statistically, if you have a look at the last 10 payrolls report, the outcome has beaten expectations in, in each 10 of them. It has actually beaten in 11 of the last 12. If I was to get the top five ranked economists who've been calling the payrolls number over the last uh, last 12 months, uh, you can see here that the the average of those calls is 250,000. So the market is, is, is uh, the, these five economists are above consensus around 220,000. Of course, there's more to it than, than just the, the level of job creation coming forward. I think you've got to look at the average hourly earnings. That's really, really important. Uh, the market's looking for about 30 basis points of, of growth or month on month, uh, and that sort of equates to about 4.7% year on year. So if we were to see a hotter earnings number, that, that could have very powerful ramifications. It's not just about the level of job creation. But given that market pricing we've seen in US rates and what we're seeing in two-year treasuries, which are now firmly above 5%, the market is saying on balance that we expect to see a strong non-farm payrolls number. And we've positioned that in the US dollar, as you can see on the dollar index daily chart. We're above that 104.91. Look, there's a bit of indecision in the price action at the moment. As I say this, you can see that in that strong, powerful breakout and then the doji uh, indecision candle on the next one there as well. But 
But I think, yeah, if we were to see a hot number on the on the, the non-farm payrolls number, if we were to see well above 300,000 married up with that job creation, you are going to see uh, further rate increases going forward. That front end of the curve will continue to sell off and you're going to see uh, your yeah, high yields and that's going to create that dollar flow that we've been seeing as well. Of course, conversely, um, if we were to see a weak payrolls number with weak earnings growth and the, average, and, and the unemployment rate, which could get thrown around really by what happens with the participation rate. You, I, I think given the position, uh, positioning that we've seen in the dollar, uh, given that what we're positioning we're seeing in terms of short rates and rate expectations, I think you'll see a more pronounced sell-off in the US dollar and relief rally in equities and gold uh, if we were to see a, a below consensus number. So a number, say, below 150, for example, would be a poor number. Uh, and I think you'd see a big sell-off coming through in the US dollar. So where did the balance of risk come for? I think we'd see a bigger, more pronounced move uh, in the US dollar and a relief rally if we were to see a downside miss than if we were to see an upside surprise given that positioning is coming forward. So what's expected for CPI? When that comes out, the market is expecting 0.4 of a percent in terms of month-for-month -month headline, and that equates to about a 6% move headline uh, year on year. Now, that's obviously a drop from what we've seen previously. And if you also have a look at the core number, the market is expecting that to be at 5.4%. From a very simplistic perspective, I want to use that month for month number to look at a probabilistic guide and a playbook as well. So it's the same situation that we saw from payrolls where the market is, is positioned for 50 basis points. Jerome Powell certainly led that through the door. So it's really about how markets could respond from positioning and relative to expectations. I think if we use that month for month clip at 0.4 of a percent on headline and on core, and if we were to get a core number above 50 basis points, that would really solidify expectations for a 50 basis point hike. Uh, if we were to get a number below 0.3%, and obviously depending how far away that gets, uh, you're going to see rate cuts, uh, rate hikes coming out of the market and the dollar's going to get hit pretty badly on that and you're going to see a nice relief rally from the perspective. Now, from a, I think from a Fed perspective, I know they're data dependent, but after stepping down to 25 basis points, then to suddenly come back up to 50 basis points is not a particularly good look. I think the Fed really wants to raise by only 25 basis points, but obviously the data has been a lot stronger. And this is really going to get solidified by what we've been seeing in payrolls and then the big one, which is going to be US CPI numbers there. So a lot to look at. In terms of levels, we've talked about 104.91 on the dollar index. If we can continue to push above that, certainly long positions are very much welcomed. Uh, we can see uh, the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern on, on, on euro dollar ominously poised. If the US dollar is to rally, uh, I think euro Aussie looks a very good trade in that situation because I think the Aussie dollar has been very weak recently after the RBA recently pivoted, or a very modest pivot, pivot should we say, that further, uh, further tightening could come through. The markets change that from further increases. And we're probably going to get one more rate hike from the RBA and then an extended pause, depending what happens with that April CPI number. So it's a big week ahead. We're going to be watching that US CPI number. We're going to be watching the UK labour market reads. And we're also going to be looking at what happens in the ECB later on in the week. The market is betting at the moment that we could get a 50 basis point hike from the Federal Reserve. But a lot's going to depend now on payrolls and also in that CPI print. I think the balance of risk are favouring US dollar shorts, given the positioning and, and where markets expectations are. But certainly the probabilistic situation is we do get above consensus reads on both. So would I be betting against the US dollar? I don't think so. I'll be waiting to react on that situation. But if you've got further uh, questions that you want to ask the team at Pepperstone, do reach out uh, or we'll see you next week.